today's video, I thought I would share with you all some of my favorite um, personal essay collections. I love this kind of book. Um, I was especially into these types of books several years ago when I actually have read the majority of these a while ago, but they have really stuck with me and um, they're pretty great, important reads. So I wanted to share them with you today. So the very first one is um, one that actually was circulating the interweb when it first came out, um, and it's Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. And this um, personal essay collection also weaves in cultural criticism, as well as obviously the author's personal biography. And I really enjoyed this book. It's very sharp. Um, she's got quite a strong voice, very opinionated, which I really appreciated. And um, Basically, it discusses anything to do with what it's like to be a 20-something or 30-something year old existing in this world. Um, she has an essay about um, looking at the internet and its conception through quite a critical lens. Um, this isn't like a book where she's telling you like, the internet is bad, like everyone delete Instagram, but um, it's quite nuanced and interesting. And that was, a, I, in my opinion, I thought that was a really great opener um, to this collection of essays. There was another one in here as well where she deconstructs the ideas or the meaning that we drench uh, weddings with, um, which I think about quite often actually. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this guy. There's some great essays in here. Uh, I'm not saying it's like groundbreaking, like novel ideas, but the way that she interprets or yeah, her perception uh, of, you know, certain phenomenons or looking at uh, things that we are plagued with living in this digital age uh, in a really interesting way. So that's my first recommendation. Uh, the second one is uh, Chelsea Hudson's Tonight I'm Someone Else. I loved this book. I think about this book quite often considering that I read it like I want to say three or two years ago. Um, but yeah, it's it, it reads like fiction. Uh, I wouldn't say this is like, they are technically essays, but I read them as like more short stories and snapshots of the author's life and exploring notions around memory, uh, love, intimacy, um, tapping into your sex or her, the author's sexuality and exploring that and being vulnerable. Um, I guess some trigger warnings there are, or there is one quite like abusive, toxic relationship in this book, but that we kind of follow throughout the book. Cause it's basically just a meditation on her, uh, first love and, uh, um, longing. The whole book to me has quite a like nostalgic, melancholic feeling to it. Um, yeah, just talking about abuse as well. Uh, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed her voice, this author's voice as well. And like I said, it read like a story or like fiction to me. So yeah. The next essay collection that I think about a lot is uh, Too Much and Not in the Mood by Durga Chubos. I absolutely loved this book. I think it really tapped into um, my own experiences as uh, a person who immigrated to Canada from South America. Um, this book really explores that she and her family um, moved to Canada as well and um, just hearing such a strong uh, like retelling of her parents struggle and just building a new life here in, in Canada and just the intricacies around having a immigrant family and you navigating this new world that is completely foreign to you and I don't know I just the immigrant um, identity and her experiences I really empathize with and resonated because I too felt that as well so I really connected to this book on a quite a personal level and um, there's especially one uh, essay in here that really just struck a chord and it's she talks about her name and um, I won't spoil it because it's just so 
beautiful and I, ugh, I too have obviously a very foreign name, Ignacia Mendez, like, <laughs> um, and people struggle with the pronunciation and, uh, yeah, so she talks about basically exploring, um, her name and the, I guess, as a means to talk about her experience as an immigrant and um, what her name meant to her and delineating the meaning behind her name. And ugh, it was just a beautiful essay that I truly should go back and read because I think about it so often. And when I read it, I was like, whoa, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Like very, very relatable. And just her prose are so beautiful. Um, this book is incredibly lyrical. Um, yeah, really profound, um, just super nuanced and just beautiful. If there's like any, actually, I'm not even going to say that I was going to be like, if there's any book in this video that you have to buy, it's this one, but they're all freaking great. So I'm not even going to say that, but yeah, I just, this one really just struck a chord. <laughs> um, the next one I have here is Melissa Broder's So Sad Today. Ooh chef's freaking kiss i honestly need to reread this one because again i read it quite a while ago but wow i loved this book it's so raw it's so gritty it's kind of dark she, there's like no filter like she's very honest incredibly vulnerable it talks about sex addiction obsession love um eating disorders literally everything under the sun it's basically just an exploration on like or personal essays literally <laughs> about melissa broder and oh yeah this was an amazing read i like read this in a day like i was just eating it up you're gonna laugh you're gonna cry it's gonna make you cringe it's gonna make you feel sad angry i freaking loved it i honestly this might be an unpopular opinion but like I don't think I'm going to read Milk Bed and I don't really want to read the Pisces, but if she ever comes out with any more nonfiction or any like essay collection, like I will be the first one to read it because I love her stuff. But just those two books, I don't, I don't know. Like <laughs> nothing about them intrigues me whatsoever, but I guess never say never. This on the other hand, I highly recommend. And if you've read her other stuff and you didn't quite like, maybe give her nonfiction writing a try because wow, she's so smart and just so sharp. Friggin' love this book. So yes. <laughs> okay. The last one I have is The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. Such a short read. Again, I read it in one day. Very different from everything I just mentioned. <laughs> I feel like this is more mature, elegant, very like contemplative. Um, like Deborah Levy isn't talking about like the first time she had sex or her being eaten out by somebody who's way younger than her. <laughs> like you might hear on in those other books. This is much more of a mature voice. <laughs> She also weaves in theory really beautifully um, and uh, it's basically just an exploration or reflecting back um, on her divorce, motherhood, writing. Um, there's a essay in particular that I think about quite often and she talks about um, how she's constructed the family home and her how much effort went into that and cultivating this nuclear family existing within this specific geographical space and how she doesn't identify with that or she feels almost like a stranger in that space. Um, I'm kind of butchering the explanation and how beautifully she speaks about that. But um, yeah, I just think about that specific essay quite often because it's just very interesting and she's very um, just so intelligent in the way that she explores um, all these themes in such a elegant, um, deep way. <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the uh, personal essay collections that I have to share with you today. Uh, those are definitely one of my 
some of my favorites and ones that, uh, like I said, have just really impacted me. Um, and I try and recommend them to people at work. And uh, now I'm doing it to you. So I hope if you read any of these or if you've read them, I hope you like them too. And if you didn't, that's okay too. <laughs> um, maybe you could tell me why down below. But yeah, I hope you have a beautiful day and I hope you um, enjoyed this video. <laughs> See ya.